Hello folks, Jason Cressman here of JC's Bees. And as I promised you last week, this week I'd like to demonstrate my homemade bottling tank. A lot of beekeepers use a plastic 5 gallon bucket with a simple honey gate on the bottom of the bucket. And that is fine, if that works for them, let them use it. Um, the 5 gallon bucket did not work so well for me during the fall and winter months when it came to bottling honey. The reason being is I'm here in the northern climates where we experience some colder weather and actually some pretty dang cold weather. And um, as it cools down, the honey gets thicker. Um, sure, I keep my honey in the house, but I heat with wood. So I've got cold spots in the house. Some rooms are a little colder than others. Um, I try to keep the honey in one of the warmer rooms, but still it gets rather thick. So for that reason, I started searching around and I found what I'm about to show you. It works really well for me and I, I won't be surprised if a lot of you consider that for your bottling tank. So let's check it out real quick and I'll break it down for you. Okay folks, what you're looking at here is my homemade bottling tank. Basically, it's a stainless steel stewing pot or a stock pot. I picked this up at my local Goodwill and I was not fortunate enough to find the lid with it. It took a couple trips to Goodwill to find everything I needed. After I found the lid and the pot, I knew which direction I was going with it, so I ordered me a honey gate. I took the inside part of the honey gate with the threads and I went and I marked right where I wanted it with a sharpie, tracing all the way around the threads themselves. After I got the mark on the pot, I went to Amazon and I ordered me a step down bit. A uh, step down bit is basically several sizes of drill bits all in one. Each one of these steps is a different size. Very handy for a beekeeper to have anyway. Um, the biggest size being an inch and three eighths. As you can see, an inch and three eighths is not quite big enough for the honey gate. So I put a metal bit in my Dremel and I finish chewing away to the line until the threads fit in the hole. I went to the inside of the pan, pushed them out, and then took the honey gate and tightened from the outside. I would like to point out that there's a rubber seal on the outside of the honey gate so that when you get it nice and snug, it seals and it does not leak. Underneath of this stainless steel pot, you're going to notice a heating pad. That's one of the reasons I like the stainless steel. It heats rather even, where a plastic five gallon bucket does not heat very evenly. Picked up this cheapo heating pad. I'm able to flip it to high and start to heat my honey. Now, because I do not want it to overheat or burn, I picked me up a thermometer. This particular thermometer has a probe, which I do not have out here, but it plugs in here and I drop the probe down in the honey. And then I'm able to read the temperature of the honey. Now the temperature you see on there now is for an alarm where you can set how high or how high you don't want your honey to get. So if I don't want my honey over 95 degrees, I set that for 95 and it will sound an alarm once it reaches 95 degrees. Works very, very well for me. So moving on, underneath the stainless steel bottling pot, I've cut me a piece of Luan. This piece of Luan I don't use all the time, but if I have honey that say it's got a couple bees in it or maybe some ants fell into the honey pot, I can slide this underneath the honey pot, get everything situated back the way I want, and I can bottle right through this stainless steel sink strainer. That's all that is, is a stainless steel sink strainer. The problem with using the stainless steel sink strainer and not straining before it goes into here is this causes restriction. So if you open this too far, this wants to fill up before the honey comes out and goes into the bottle. So you've got to regulate this to the honey gate to the right spot to adjust your flow so that it doesn't overflow here before it goes into the bottle. Um, underneath on my everyday setup of bottling, I use a simple shipping scale. 
the scale I use for everything, um, including honey. What I'll do is I'll set my plate on here. It's not plugged in, so I can't demonstrate. But I'll set my plate on here. I'll set my empty bottle on there. And then I'll reset the tear. And what that will do is make it so that I'm only weighing the honey that goes into these bottles. I do not want to weigh the bottle. I do not want to weigh the lid. And I definitely do not want to weigh that plate. So that's just a simple setup on how I would bottle honey with my homemade bottling tank. Um, these pots are able to be found in several different sizes. And if you buy them new, you're going to have a lot of money in them. So I would search Craigslist, Goodwill, um, flea markets, anything like that if this is the route you want to go. So what do you think? you think this is something you would consider for your own bottling tank? Or do you prefer the five gallon bucket? If so, why? Another thing I'd like to mention is my honey extraction video will be coming. Um, I've wanted to get to it for the last couple weeks, but I've just got so much going on that time isn't allowing me to do that. Um, besides the bees, I manage a grass-fed beef farm where I move the cattle two to three times a day and the cattle are followed by a portable chicken coop with a hundred chickens. So between the chickens, the cows, the bees, i um, very busy man. So the video will be coming. Just make sure you keep an eye open for it and if you haven't subscribed, please do that down below. And when the video is released, you'll be able to find it a lot easier. I hope you like this video and if so, you'll give me a thumbs up and be appreciated. That'll help other beekeepers find this video a lot easier by boosting it in the YouTube search ranks.